Uh, we'll start up. Thank you, Shmuel Grosper. Thank you, Avrami Horowitz. Avrami, I'm unmuting you. Avrami, Shalom Aleichem, how are you? Avram Horowitz, how are you? Baruch Hashem, Rabbi. Couldn't be better. Thank you for coming. Whose shir are you in, Avram? From Nesson Stein. Ashrecha. Ashrecha. Continued Hatzlacha. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. We will start up in one minute. Shmuel Grossberger, how are you? I'm doing awesome. How's Rabbi? Great to see you. Right After Yom Tiv, you got to come visit Shmuel. I want to see. Maybe I'll come to you. We'll meet somewhere. No, I'm going to come. It's on my to-do list. Thank you. Thank you, Shmuel. I'm looking forward. Thank you. Excellent. Momo, you're unmuted. How are you, Momo? Hi, Rabbi. How, how are you feeling, Momo? Good. How's Rabbi doing? Excellent. Happy to learn with you. Thank you. Uh, you'll ask your parents. I want to get together. We'll figure out when we can get together, Momo. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin Lowy, for being here. Thank you. Okay, let's start up, Rabbi Say. I want to learn the third to last and second to last Mishnah, Bez Hashem, in the second parak of Abbas. We're on Mishnah Tesvav in this. In this Cheshben, it's Mishnah Tesvav, Reb Shimon Oimer. Mishnah Tesvav, it's the third to last Mishnah in some versions. In this version, the third to last Mishnah in the second paragraph. Reb Shimon Oimer. Reb Shimon said, Avi Zohir b'kriyashma v'tfila. Be careful with zman kriyashma and zman tfila. Ukisha'ata m'spal al tas tfila s'chakeva. And when you daven, don't daven keva. We'll explain it. El arachmim v'tachnunim. This is one of, I don't, are you allowed to say your favorite Mishnah? If you're allowed to say it, it's one of my favorite Mishnahs. If you're not allowed to say it, then I just want to learn this with you. <laughs> I want to learn this with you, Hevra. This Mishnah is, it's worth to be born to study this Mishnah. We're going to discuss two people, my friends. We're going to discuss tonight a rigid fellow and a loosey-goosey guy, an easy-going guy. We'll discuss a very put-together, yekish guy who's never been late. Let's go the other side, like somebody, call it ADHD, somebody who's maybe like Dan Kalish, very time-challenged and schedule-challenged. Two people. People tend when they think about themselves, they see the flaw. Let's talk about the Lucy Goosey, the guy who's time challenged. See, he looks at himself that prayers, this one is slanted against me. Zman Kriyashma, Zman Tfila, the, the three davenings a day, Shachris. It's interesting, we've all been in our houses. So the Minyanim, while we were making davening in our house, Shachris was the time that we wanted. We tried to get it as, as said as possible, but Lemaisa was flexible to our schedule. Shachris, Mincha, Meirev. Slowly we're opening up back to our shuls. Mincha today was 7.59. Not 8, not 7.58. It was 7.59. I was in the middle of Aryeh Weiss's dinner. He's being honored, that precious Ben Teira. He's being honored by the mirror tonight. At 7.57, it's a minute walk to the dinner. I had to leave my house. It's time for Mincha, 7.59. So one would think, Rabbi say, that prayer favors the more rigid, disciplined guy. It's a tremendous mistake. And I want to study this Mishnah. And I want to learn all about human beings, and I want to say as follows, my friends. There are two components to prayer, and this Mishnah is gorgeous. On the one hand, have a Zahir b'kriyashma v'tfila. Even kriyashma, there's an Indian to say b'tzibur. It's not just Shema Nesrei. It's a medrash at the end of Shir Hashirim, where it says Hashem comes to Shul, and he brings his army, and he says, come and look at my bunai, that they say kriya shma b'tzibur. So havizor b'kriya shma b'tfila means to be careful with the zmanim kvuim of kriya shma b'tzibur and tfila b'tzibur, be very careful. 
Reb Chaim Velazhin as well, many Mepharshim learn the Mishnah doesn't just mean Zman Kriya Shman, Zman Tfila, it means B'tzibah, Reb Chaim Velazhin learns that way. So be very, very careful with Kriya Shma B'tzibah, with Tfila B'tzibah. But then it says, Al Tas Tfilascha Keva. The tendency then of Mr. Rigid is my prayers are exact, I banged off task of Shachris. I banged off Mincha. I banged off my, okay, I could check off. I picture the rig, rigid guy. He usually has tissues in his pocket. Under the tissues, he has like a little notepad like this. He pulls it, and he always has a pocket in his white shirt. I'm just teasing the guy, don't worry. But the guy pulls out his, his thing, and he checks off. He checks off Shachris. Check. Mincha, check. He's so organized. He's so exact. He marks in his little pad. He's so exact. Says the Mishnah that it's true we have to be very exact with prayers. But don't make your prayer keva. Don't make it that you're doing like this exact appointment. Rachamim v'tachnonim. Davim with emotion. Davim with passion. Davim with connection. I want to say to the two fellas, each one has a mila. The very, I have seen Bachram who are very loose and struggle with schedules. They're often very emotional people. It goes hand in hand. They are very emotional. That's why they struggle with the rigidity of schedule. The emotions, they're very feeling and energetic and passionate. Prayer needs two opposite components, two contradictions. It needs the organization and rigidity of time. Mencha 759, I'm not making it up, not 8, not 758. For my mind to wrap around that, 759 is Mencha. On the other hand, don't make your daven in keva. Don't make it this rigid robotic activity. I once, I once was talking to a guy who's ADHD and he told me anybody who knows about it knows that monotonous tasks, repetitious tasks, precise tasks are very difficult. As such as youngsters, they often struggle with tefillah b'tzibur, with the organization of davening, the schedulize, the rigidity of davening. I told them, you are fortunate because 50% of prayer is that, is that structure, that army-like, soldier-like structure. But the Mishnah also warns passion, emotion, connection, and love. You, your only way to pray is with passion. First of all, you tend to be more passionate. And second of all, the only way you can approach prayer, because you tend to be somebody who monotonous tasks, fine tasks, just details without meaning don't work by you, you're forced to find adventure in prayer. You're forced to make, that guy needs to meet up with a group of friends by a certain minion. He needs after the minion to catch up on the hack. He needs to find within prayer interesting, interesting ideas, new ideas that capture, he needs that to pray. And as such, he has a more dynamic, more dramatic, more lively prayer. It comes out, each person has a mila in prayer. We have to know that we can find within our personalities a connection to the tasks of Yiddishkeit. I'm going to talk about marriage counseling for a second, and I'm going to come back. I am not right now, I have not been clear what I mean, but hold steady, it will become clear in a second. A couple is struggling with their marriage. They're struggling, they're opposites. He's a guy who goes to sleep at eight o'clock every night. He's mamish exact. He davens myriv and he hits, by 8.30 he's out cold and he wakes up four in the morning. She's a lady who talks to everybody in the community. She reaches out, she encourages, she's mamish, 
talking to everybody in the community. Thank you, Huda Badi, for putting the mission up there. Thank you. She's talking to everybody in the community, and she's friendly and in Karsha. She goes to sleep at about 12.31, 1.32-ish. You know that type? 2.30, 3-ish, 3.30. You know, she goes to sleep late. She wakes up 9-ish, 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30. She, she, that she is. See, and they're just different worlds, this couple. He's mamish asleep at eight. I don't know who made the shidduch. He goes to sleep eight. Literally, when he's getting up, she's like just going to sleep. They're pasha in different time zones. Now, when he gets up every morning, he has the exact same black coffee. Every morning at six in the morning, he has a black coffee with a half a teaspoon of sugar, not a whole teaspoon and not a fourth, a half. Very exact. He makes the same, remember, he's a rigid fellow. He likes routine and exactness. He makes the exact coffee. He does it the same way the last 40 years. He push it, puts in the water since he's 16 the same way. She likes an iced coffee. She likes it with a lot of sugar. I'm just getting their personalities. She, when she wakes up at 11, likes an iced coffee, good freezing iced coffee, with about 16 teaspoons of, coffee, with, of, of sugar. A lot of milk and a lot of sugar. Lemay said they're just opposites and they're not getting along. So Rabbi say, they got a marriage therapy to a marriage counselor to try to figure out how to get them on the same page. And people try all different tricks. They try to have them one night a week have a nice dinner together. Go once a week, go shopping somewhere, go out to a restaurant. And it doesn't typically work because they are finding something dramatic out of their life to connect them. They connect at that mall trip. They connect at that shopping spree at their dinner that they eat, the candlelight dinner. But then in their life, he can't find her and she can't find him. They finally go to a wise marriage therapist and he tells them that what I want you to do, he says to the gay, what I want you to do is every morning at four, remember at six o'clock, he makes himself a cup of coffee. He loves routine. Every morning at six o'clock, make your wife an iced coffee. Remember 16 teaspoons of sugar and make it exactly like she likes it. He loves that because remember, he's a man of routine. And every morning, he doesn't even see her. He doesn't even see her. He runs off to work. But when she wakes up, she finds the exact coffee that she likes made to perfection. He puts it in the fridge to the minute how she likes it. Rabbi said they're much quicker back together and they have a good marriage. Because it sounds less dramatic than the candlelit dinner once a week, than the shopping trip. They don't even see each other. But the smart therapist shows him, her in his life, you miss the rigid, you can grab onto her in the mahalach of your life. There's room, there's, there's something for her and you she fits in your life. And to her, he fits in your life. And they find each other in their lives. This is the mashal rabbi say, tavoy des Hashem. The person who looks at prayer and he says, I'm like a, I'm a loosey goosey, what do I do this man in? He can find himself in prayer. Prayer, you're an emotional sort. You're energetic. You're a shtickle party guy. You're, the davening is for you. The rigid guy struggles with this part of prayer. Prayer is not supposed to be a rigid activity. It's not something you mark off on your little, on your little schedule in your pocket. Tfil actually fits you. And of course, this person has a spot and feel, of course, he has to bend and grow and learn to also be balanced with Zman and with time. But he's already found a place for prayer that it fits him. And this, Rabbi Isaiah, are the two components to prayer. The rigid person has to find the emotion and the passion and the love and the spunk and energy in prayer. 
That's the rigid person. And the energetic, passionate guy has to find the rigidity. But they both have a tremendous hold and grasp. They both have shaykhs within their mahalach achayim to prayer. They both have a way to connect to prayer. All in Yoni Avaydis Hashem have this aspect. Find it in who you are, how you have a natural like connection to this. The same guy who tells me I struggle with prepared prayers is like the exact guy who fits al tasfilas keva, this emotional, passionate fire. He has a certain connection to prayer that's so unique and so perfect. Of course, he has to adjust. And once he finds the connection, the, the, the exact connection to prayer, it very much concerns me. There's a movement in Klai Yisrael that comes from such beautiful places, quiet by prayers. It comes from beautiful. The Yidden who run it are the best Yidden in the world. Of course, it's missing in half the Mishnah. Al tas filas keva. It's, it's highlighting one point. Of course, prayer should have a quiet to it, of course. But there should also be energy and passion and gishmak, a fire of coming to the base Eloikim, Nahalich Beregish. The quiet, rigid guy by prayer has a big mila. And the guy who flies into the room handling with many cell phones also has a big mila. They both have a tremendous yad in prayers. I want there to be an equal campaign. I want to ask every magazine that prints a quiet by davening to also have more energetic prayers. Let's have more singing. Let's get you the tzvi to come. More geshmak. We need fire. We need passion. We need excitement by the prayers. It has to be a place. Beis Eloikim Nahalich Beregesh. Rabbi Brownstein Shlita has created by the prayers by us. Guys daven beautifully. But there's a certain energy in the air. It's so beautiful. There's an energy in the air. A yid came to yeshiva, wonderful yid. He said he was checking out the yeshiva. He said, 15 years in my school, I was looking for a prayer like this. It was a random Tuesday. I was looking for a prayer like this. There's an electricity in the air of people and excitement, a brand. Prayers are coming. These two aspects of prayer, some of us tend to be more connected to the, to the Zmanim, to the organization of prayer. And each of us have to bend. The guy who's more organized, Ashrecha, you have such a leg into prayer, prayer which has manim, which has set times, which is, brings such an organization to our life. You have a yad and a connection to such prayers. Beautiful, beautiful. Now make sure I'll pass filasa keva, but make sure your prayer never becomes such a rigid activity that you're just checking off. Make sure there's passion. Make sure a little, you're a guy, I don't say chas v'shom, don't talk by davening. But maybe crack a joke after davening, before. Come with a geshmak. This is not just your, your hectic schedule where you check off another to-do thing on your list. Come with a geshmak. You're talking to Hashem with a smile, with an excitement. You're coming to the base Eloikim. Al task filas keva. Don't just make this another task on you, you busy person on your list. So this is the two aspects of prayer that must be there. And Baruch Hashem, every year, like has such a, such a natural connection to at least one spot of prayer. Nobody's born the perfect balance. But we all, whatever type you are, from the schedulized guy to the looser guy, you both have, both of us have such an in in prayer and such an akuda that we can grab onto prayer. And from that place of connecting to prayer, work on being mashlim, becoming a shalim. The, the, the rigid guy, you have such a good connection to the organization of three prayers a day. And then from that place, let's, let's add some passion and fire. Let's add, let's talk and make our wife a nice iced coffee and put in a lot of sugar in hers. But say there, let's, that guy in shul, you're so frustrated, he's late, but he comes in with so much noise. You've been there so long, and he like, learn from him, his energy, his excitement, his buzz, like a little overwhelms you. 
instead of taking out a campaign, and I could also have the campaign quiet and shown, but maybe learn from that guy passion, excitement, ochios, that's for you, for you the, the, the more organized sort, for you the little bit lebedic who's walking in late but fired up, look at that guy, you have such a connection to prayers, your prayer is never keva, is never just crossed off the list, that's not how you do anything in your life, but let's get more organized, let's come on time, let's be Abi Zohir, Zman Kriyashma, Zman Tfila, let's come on time to the davenings. So every person has a way to connect to this, this holy matter. And each of us, <laughs> whoever wrote, that's one of the top, we're ranking top 10 texts. It says from Mr. Rigid, excuse me, I don't appreciate this texting during a show. I'm trying to listen. I need to go to sleep at exactly 1030. That's Roy for, the, for Shloy Maguri. I don't know who wrote it. Excellent, excellent, excellent text. Excellent. If that's Rev. Ezi Shlita, Gewaldig. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Rabbi Sai, that's this first, this remarkable, remarkable Mishnah. It's so kedai to, to harv on this Mishnah. It's just Gewaldig. Let's move on. The end of the Mishnah says something fascinating. The Mishnah says, V'al tia rasha b'fnei I, there's many pshak, and I want to, for full disclosure, on every Mishnah, you can learn the Mishnayis, there are hundreds, thousands. Hashem's words are deep. We're learning one Indian this time around. Altia Rasha Bifnayatzmacha. Five words. Momo Ringo, five words. Altia Rasha Bifnayatzmacha. Altia Rasha Bifnayatzmacha means, Reb Chaim Velashin says, is be careful not to dive in the don't be a Russia by yourself. I'm going to repeat Rebbeinu Bechaya that we learned together Erev Shabbos Kodesh in light of Reb Chaim Velazhin's pshat on this Mishnah. It's, it's a remarkable Vashkach. We just learned Rebbeinu Bechaya. Rebbeinu Bechaya says, we know the Gemara says that it's Asr, it's alive to count Yidin. You're not allowed to count Yidin. Mitzad Echad, we want to count Yidin because everybody's so chashuv. Kulam b'shem yikro. Everybody's chashuv. So Avada, we want to count Yidin. On the other hand, it's a lav to count Yidin. David HaMelech was tempted. He had such a chiba of the Yidin. He wanted to count the Yidin. Yoyav, his general. Yehuda Tzvi knows we also have a general in our army, Yoyav. Yoyav was the general. And Yoyav told David HaMelech, don't count the Yidin. But David HaMelech counted the Yidin. It's in Shmuel Beis. And we know that the Navi, Nasan, the Navi Nasan came to David, and David was told that Klal Yisrael is going to be punished. And he had a choice, three choices of what punishment to take. David HaMelech said, and we say every day by Tachin, Vayoyme David Al-Gud, Sarli Ma'od, I'm in a lot of pain, that because of my sin of clowning the Yidin, they're going to be punished. Nifla no biyad Hashem, he wanted the three days of pestilence, because Hashem's hands, we want to fall him. Ki rabim rachim, Hashem is so merciful. Ubiyad adam ala poilu, we don't want to fall into man's hand. So David HaMelech chose the three days of pestilence, and we know 70,000 yidin were nifter. Now the shail is, why was so many yidin nifter? Because David HaMelech's chet. Why iPhone nailed it? Why were they punished? For David Amelas had excellent, excellent wife, wife on. And Dovi Franklin, you're always your positive, Dovi Franklin, your positive texts are beautiful. So wife, wife, iPhone nailed it. Why is Claudius Yisrael punished for David Amelas Chet? Says Rebbeinu Bechaya. Says Rebbeinu Bechaya that the reason David Amelas was, it wasn't the punishment. Klal Yisrael, once they were singled out, then they were punished for their own Averis. The rabbin protects the yachid. Because we're part of such a prote- special people, it protects the individual. Once David HaMelech counted each individual, it hurt. It made them separate, and they didn't get the schos rabbin. Memela, 70,000 people died. They lost the schos, They were an individual. They lost the schos rabbin. Yitzi says, Reb Chaim Belashen, listen to what Reb Chaim Belashen says about a minion. I want to quote it to the guys because it's remarkable. Reb Chaim Belashen writes in his Sefer, Ruach, Ruach Chaim, on Avais. 
He says, don't dive in B'yechidus, don't dive in alone. Because when you dive in alone, it needs kavana yaseira, extra kavana. And if not, tfilasai nidchis, the t- prayer can get pushed away. Avil imat tzibur, if you dive in with a tzibur, avshaloi tei tfilasai kol kach b'kavana. You might not have dived in so hot. You didn't dive in with so much kavana. Im kol ze, you didn't dive in the kavana shlema with a whole kavana. Im kol ze inenu nemeses, Hashem will never just throw it away. He brings a zayar in part in Bereshis. The zayar says, pinei el tfilas ha'arar. Ha'arar means a yachid. In an individual, Hashem looks very carefully at his prayer. However, v'loi baza es tfilasam. Tfilas harabim is never disgraced. Says the, says the Reb Chaim V'lazim, Ratzalayim ha'sha tfilas yachid, the prayer of an individual, Painim Aisal Kol Tzad, Hashem looks at it very carefully. Bedektok, v'chipus, v'chol oilam v'oilam. Derech Aliyah, as the prayer rises, it's very carefully examined. Im hiruyo ilalos, is it worthy of going up? Im lav chas v'shom. Avaloi bazes tfilasam, listen to this. Ratz aloi mar tfilas sibir, when we dive in with the tzibir. Da'afim eno ruya kol kach lalos, even if it can go up, it's not worthy. A midach can allow, Hashem's not so careful, Kolkach. B'schos ha-tzibur, he gets the merits of the rabbim, and it has tremendous power. So that's what the Mishnah's ending. The Mishnah ends, al tia rasha b'fnei A person should not be a rasha by himself. He shouldn't make himself an individual, that he loses a schos rabbin. The rush here means that he's now totally on his own merits. Don't be a rasha b'fnei atzmecha. Don't cause yourself to be judged by being yourself. Be part of a tzibur. So Rabbi Yisai, this nekud that we've discussed, as we're returning to our tzibur, certainly we're encouraging tzibur b'tzibur, which is tremendous schos for everybody's tzibur. And we're discussing also belonging to a rabbin. We all need the zchus harabim. Belong to a rabbin. Be somebody who stells suit to the rabbin, who cares about his people. I like when my kids say, my people, Pesach night. I had every one of my children talk about Klai Yisrael, my people. To be somebody who's connected, who cares about his people, my people, our people to be part of Klai Yisrael. Say proudly by Meir, Vanachlu Yisrael Amoy. We are Hashem's people. To be part of the Tzibur is what this Mishnah is talking about. I would like to study now the next Mishnah, Rebbe Lazar Reimer. Rebbe Lazar says, and this, this Indian will talk about as follows. Rebbe Lazar Reimer, Have a shakud lil mutaira. A person should learn by smada. Vidam ashetashav lapikairis and know how to answer back in Apikairus. This is something I beg of the Chevra. We've been zayichet to hear different guys speak. I really want many more people speaking. I'd love to get to Ari, Mendi, Avi, the whole Chevra speak. This is a pet area that's important to me. My Rebbe taught me this, and I asked the Olam. It's so important to learn to articulate the ideas of Torah. Have a lil matira. Learn Tyra basmada. Learn basmada. Vidama shatoshalash bikiris means learn how to express to the uninitiated, to the ignorant, even to the person who's misnage da bikiris. Learn how to express Tyra. To somebody bidafka who's misnage. There are people who learn and they say, I know my learning, I just don't have such power of articulation. I spoke after Mati Dahan gave the shear that I don't buy in. Somebody says, I get it, I just can't say it. It's true, this, there's an ability to express and articulate, but it also measures how the clarity that we have it. Learn to have a clarity in our learning, to be able to articulate and give over the ideals and the messages that we learned. It's so important to me, Ben Taira. Zevi sitting and learning by Asmada, Zevi Sher, Zevi Gerala in, in Teres Chaim. 
to learn to be able to clearly say over your Torah, but not to somebody who knows Torah, to not be kairos, somebody who is the hefich, to be able to articulate the ideas in a clear, exact manner. Sometimes we even fool ourselves. We use languages that are very base medrash like languages that can often cover up do we really have clarity in something. So me and my chavrusa, there's like a deal going on. You know what I mean? Epis, the gavrus chalais is on the chavru. Say there. And your chavrusa will buy in also. Make sure the ideas are so clear to the uninitiated to the Apikairis, who's never learned, that you can articulate clearly. It's good that we have a language of Torah, very important. And Gavra, Chefsa, Chalais are all crucial, vital words. But then make sure that we have ideas so clear, so clearly we can articulate the Torah to anybody. For anybody who was Zoyche to hear Shiorim from Rebelski Zatzel, that precious Sadik, the way he was able to articulate ideas in Tyra, remarkable, remarkable, the way he was able to articulate ideals in Tyra was something naira, was something naira. Somebody on the chat asked that for men, we have minion. Men have a much harder time with connection than ladies. Hashem made it that way. Ladies are better connectors than men. And to a man, so there's Trila B'Tzibur to connect to the Tzibur. A lady, the way the Nashim Tzidkani, I saw Mispalo for a tzibur, we're talking about a concept of caring about the tzibur. So we pray for the tzibur, all different ways of connecting to the tzibur. But I want to say over here, Rabbi, I learned Torah and then learn to articulate the ideals of Torah. Have a shakod lil mutayra vidam ashatas of lapikars. Years ago, years ago, of one of the precious B'nai Torah in Yeshiva told something to the rest of the Chevra in Yeshiva. Sometimes we meet a Rebbe, Rabbi Wisniki, and we love our Rebbe. Wow, he's amazing. He's amazing, he's wonderful. But if you can't articulate what's amazing about him, there's no revolution. You can't impact others. You can learn by your guys, learn and say, oh, he's amazing, it's wild. Whoa, whoa. If you can't articulate clearly what it is that you got from him, what you see by him, that no revolution is born. You can't give it over to your children. You can't bring it back to your family and your community. The importance of being able to articulate the ideas in Ruchnius, the ideas of Tyra, the values of Tyra, and to be able to share it with the next person. Make sure to learn Tyra Basmada and then be able to articulate the ideas. Years ago, I was sitting with a family member who wasn't yet from. And people were trying, B'nai Torah were trying to explain to him ideas in Yiddishkeit. And I was very shaken at their inability to express Yiddishkeit clearly, to articulate exactly what it says, what we're learning. It is so important, but not just, of course, to impact Yenem, but really to impact our own souls. We also have an apikairis and a beginner and a doubter. We have it all inside of us. The more clarity, the more we can express it, the more we ourselves are impacted by Tyra. Learn to take ideas that we learn, all different ideas, and think it through. Learn how to express it. Abi Lachman wrote me over, as he's written many different Tyra and ideas, the clarity that you can see he has when he puts on paper and he expresses it and is able to express it, is so vital, is so important, it can't be stated enough. Certainly, really, in order to impact others, we have to be able to articulate Yiddishkeit, but to impact ourselves, to be ignited by Torah, really work hard on all ideas we learn. Ask yourself how I would give this over to the uninitiated, to an apikairis, to a person who is misnagged, and get it to a clarity that I mamish can express the idea I learned. This is what this Mishnah said. Shakod lo mutayra, learn by asmada, vida mashatash lapikairis. Learn how to express and articulate that which we learned. The Mishnah finishes, vida lufnei miyata amal, to know in front of whom we are toiling, to know that Hashem sees our maisim. 
in the lines we'll read Reb Chaim Velashen, Great Salaymar Bifan of Mamish. We're working Bifnei Hashem. Kyu Ba'atz Moi Oymir Alecha. He himself is standing on top of us. Hashem cares about what we're doing. Tchunei Miyat Ta'amu, we're working in front of Hashem. We spoke at Siyat Ha'dishmaya, everything's Hashkachas Hashem. This morning we said that Baya saw in Rus, the Gemara Shabbos Kuf Yud Gimel, he was amazing in the diktuk of halacha, in the exactness of halacha of, 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 um, of Rus, that she was so medaktik in Din. And we discussed that what it takes to be medaktik in Din is the awareness that we, Hashem, cares about what we do. When people ask the Frumi, does it really matter? Does God really care? To translate their words in Begeder Dama Shetoshelah Pikiris, what they're really saying is knock it off, you're not that important. And the answer is that we are that important. There's a Gaiva, a Gaiva Diktosha. Hashem cares what we do. It matters. We should know Lufnei Miyat Omo. You know, the, the, the guards in front of the royalty, there's much more rules how they're naig. There's more of an exactness because they're Lufnei Amelech. A yid is lufnei Hashem, mamish. The Messiah Sisharim describes two places that somebody's lufnei Hashem, mamish. He says when you're oimed b'tfila, when you're doing a mitzvah. Doing a mitzvah, it's not widely known, is lufnei Hashem, mamish, which is the words of Reb Chaim Belaj, lufnei miyat ta'amol, writes a loimar b'fon of mamish. A mitzvah's the gather of lufnei Hashem, no lufnei miyat ta'amol. Understand when we do a mitzvah that Hashem is watching and Hashem cares and it matters what we do. We are chashev and we matter. Very important, b'chen of mitzvahs, the gedr of lufnei Hashem. I was so moved as Rishonim that our friend, Rav Shalom Rabashkin, he performed mitzvahs and he had the understanding, amamish the shas chedmesa. When I'm doing mitzvahs, I'm connected. He said early, I'm not letting go of you, Hashem. So how am I going to hold on to you? Hein, hein, a mitzvah, through the mitzvahs. The mitzvahs, again, they're connected to Hashem, attached to Hashem. That is the gather of doing mitzvahs. Da lufnei miyat Understand when we do mitzvahs that we're mamish. Kipshut or lufnei Hashem in the words of Reb Chaim B'Lazh and Ratz Eloim are b'fun of mamish. V'nemen hu ba'am alach t'chashi yisham l'choschar p'laseich. And Hashem certainly is going to pay us reward for our actions. Of course, it's talking about schar and there's great schar. But also the word of schar is how much Hashem cares. That he, yes, cares about our pu'ulus. There's a gvaldig agaiva here. Hashem's going to pay up to us. He cares, is watching, and pays in full. Kaviyachal, Hashem Pashut pays us to do it. He wants us to do it. He has a lot riding in us to it. He wants us and it counts and it matters. A very important begin of Asiyas HaMitzvahs. This Rabbi Say is Mishnah Yudalud. I want to find the Chevra. I want to, I know tonight, just the whole day we learned, it was Yoim HaMiyochis. We weren't together. If Simcha Spurn and I were together all day, if Eli Goldberg, we would have sang V'atem Tiyuli Mamleches Kehanim all day together. Ezra Chassan. How are you, Chassan? Great. Phenomenal. Excellent. Excellent. Do we have a date for the Chassanah yet? Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a touchy subject, but I think it's going to be in the first, Mir Tashem, in the first week of August. This right was like the about. forum to ask such a sensitive yeah. question. For sure. <laughs> this is only amongst family, Ezra. The Mishpach. I thought on the chat we can discuss the date, Ezra. Well, you're more than welcome. <laughs> mazel tov, mazel tov, Husin, mazel tov. Excellent. Let's find, I'm turning, let's find. Ah, oh. Chaim Schwartz, I'm unmuting you. Yeah, Do you know Va'atim Tiyuli? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let's we'll, we'll write out. <laughs> do a different song, do a song you're comfortable. I want you to do a song you're comfortable. We'll find somebody else afterwards to sing Vatim Tiuli. Okay, what and re, what does Rebbe want? Anything? A nice song from Chaim Schwartz. Okay, one second. Yehuda Badi's here. Let's do a really gorgeous song for Chaim Schwartz. Uh. 
Uh, Thanks a million, Chaim. For sure. I'm going to mute so we can hear you. That was off the charts, Chaim. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is in honor of Yehuda Deitch. Who saw, who, did you write that song? No, no, I wish. <laughs> it's Azusha. Beautiful, beautiful. That was stunning. Thank, Thank you, you Chaim. I am happy Yehuda got that. Thank you, Chaim. Beautiful. Thanks a ton, Chaim. Arye. Hi there, Rabbi. Excellent. I'm so happy. What song is in you, Arye? Do you want Vatim Timam Lechas? We could do something else. Once Chaim did something else and was it was better than I wanted. Do whatever you want. I think it's gonna be a game time decision. <laughs> how's the sound? How's the how are we how are we sounding right now? We sound great right now. Maybe it's a... Maybe we should raise it.
Sorry, a gorgeous song. Thank you, Rabbi. Excellent. Choice. Really, really good. You get one other now. You did this one. You get any one you want. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That was stunning, Arye. I you, really, Rabbi. really appreciate it, Arye. Both two for two, Arye. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. <laughs> we still have to get, well, there's Hashem. Before, we still have a few weeks left. We got to get Momo to sing for us. Zevi Ginniger is here tonight also. We badly need Zevi. We'll get to them yet. There's Hashem. I want to thank you, the Tzvi, and the whole Hever for coming. Appreciate it. Bezer Hashem, tomorrow will be the two o'clock shear, and tomorrow night we'll finish the second pair of Bezer Hashem of Avais, and then the, the next night we'll have a seum. We'll have some extra zmiris, extra singing. Maybe we'll get Momo and Zevi that night. Thank you so much, Rabbi Sai, for joining. Have an outstanding night. Uh, I, 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 I,
eight or a four when he had a straight. Yeah, but it's a weird kind of double, eh? Yeah. Cool, it's double gotcha. No, I like that. Like Ezzy, rep Ezzy. I like 30 ones. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a beer. You're on mute. Got Who's that? Who's muting me? Uh, yeah. hey, Someone else on there? Hi, how you doing? How are you? Coming from Nachum Snyder, if you can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Buzzy. Yeah. Yeah. It's always really so crazy. Yo, Ari. Or what are you? What are you? Yitzi. What is this? Yitzi, what event is this? Then you don't also put this in the chat. What is this? What are you watching right now? Oh, what is this? What are you going to say? Grab SZ, we need to chill. We need to kill. Rebezzi. Biggie. Mr. Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey. 